All righty. Well, welcome everyone to this three-part series webinar that's being put on by Purse Bertram and SMC. The purpose of this webinar is to go over some of the new robot-related products that SMC is releasing. SMC, as many of you know, is a, a global leader in automation, and as one of their key distributors in New England, Purse Bertram is happy to support those robot applications, but I'll get more into what we do at Purse Bertram towards the end of the presentation. So uh, really the, the agenda for today's meeting is to go over some of the new products that were, were recently released from R&D. SMC spends million, millions of dollars in R&D every year to advance their product offering. And as many of you know, cobots have kind of taken the market by storm in the automation world. And so SMC has hopped on the train and spent a lot of money developing new robots specifically to be used with robots and cobots. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and, and walk through this presentation. So real fast, what I wanna do is just take a couple minutes to familiarize everyone with cobots in general. I know there might be some people on the call who are very familiar with robot applications, but there may be some newbies on the call who have no idea what a collaborative robot even is or does. So I'm gonna take literally just 60 seconds to breeze through what a cobot is. So really what a cobot is, is a robot that is designed to work in a manufacturing environment within close proximity of other humans. And what I mean by that is there's actually, usually torque sensors built into each of the joints. You can see on the right hand side there, I have a picture of a, a typical collaborative robot. This one in particular is made by Omron. Omron Techman is the brand. And within each of those three joints, actually four joints, there are torque sensors that will actually monitor exactly what is going on with the robot. So in the case that the robot impacts a human being or another piece of equipment, it will throw an error and, and supposedly won't cause very much damage to that piece of equipment or to that individual. Normally robots, uh, you know, old style industrial robots, they kind of do what they do with, with no premonition about what's around them. So you run into situations where you have to throw up a ton of hard guarding because you don't want people to, to get injured. So again, collision detection, typically they're made of lightweight materials. They're, they're made to be safe. So they're designed with very little pinch point opportunity. In recent years, we've seen them designed specifically for people who don't have any robot programming experience whatsoever. And part of that is the graphical programming interface that uh, many of the cobot manufacturers are offering nowadays. Back in the day, industrial robots used a ton of line by line code, uh, JavaScript, C, whatever it may be. Nowadays, it's very intuitive. You can open the software, and within a few days, you can more or less be. Uh, be up and running with, with your, your simple, simpler uh, robot applications. They're typically low cost and they are uh, typically teachable. And what I mean by teachable is that many of the robots actually have buttons on them that will allow the operator to release the joints and move the robot in a desired path. The robot software will record that path and then the path can be replayed autonomously after the fact. So in essence, you can basically teach the robot without any programming what you want it to do, hit replay, and it will do that, that action. Uh, applications, I mean, any six axis robot application is on the table here. Typically you see them in machine tending, screw driving, inspection, gluing, soldering, packaging, assembling, and, and the list goes on. Obviously any application where you need a six axis robot a cobot could uh, could be examined. So specifically about the Omron Techman brand, we are an Omron Techman distributor here at Purse Bertram, and so we do sell and support Omron collaborative robots. They come in four sizes. The maximum reach is 3.6 feet, and the maximum payload is 30 pounds. So these are not robots that are intended to sit on the floor and lift up car parts and things of that nature. The robots that we handle are what I call desktop size. They're meant to be put on a table or on a fixture of some kind, maybe even hung from the ceiling or from the wall. They're not really designed for bigger, heavier welding, load lifting type applications. 
One thing that makes the Omron unique in the market is that it comes with a 3D calibration and landmark package built in. Typically with other manufacturers, the, the vision package and the uh, 3D calibration package is not included as part of their standard offering. However, with Omron it is. So if you have an application that requires vision for whatever reason, these are a great option. And what I mean by 3D calibration is that, uh, so if, if you, uh, so if you look at this image that just popped up, you'll notice there's a small square sticker that we, we call a QR code, but really what it is is a three-dimensional landmark. And the robot can take a picture essentially of that landmark and know exactly where it is in three-dimensional space. So you can put these stickers on the workpiece, you can put them on machines, you can put them on stands, you can put them anywhere where the robot needs to orient itself. So for example, you may have two machines that are doing a slightly different process. And rather than buy two robots to tend those machines, you could buy one robot, put it on a cart, and have a landmark feature on both of the machines. Now what you can do, instead of buying two robots, is you can wheel the, the robot up to each machine. The robot will take a picture of the landmark and it'll know in relation to that machine where in three-dimensional space it is. So that's just a, a classic example of how uh, three-dimensional orientation can be used to basically prevent you from purchasing more robots than you need to purchase. They can be used for a ton of other applications as well, obviously, where, where orientation is key. Back in the day with old industrial style robots, unfortunately, orientation seemed to always be a challenge. You had to program for a specific coordinate system. And if things got a little out of line or if someone bumped into something or moved something, it could potentially cause the process to fail and it could potentially cause a ton of damage. So in a, in a situation where you need to be precise and you need to be aligned every time, you can always start the process by looking at this landmark feature. With the cost, your typical cost is about 35 to 45, depending on the options. One thing I will say about Omron, is that the cost of the robot includes almost everything you need to get up and running, including the pendant, the controller, the cables, the calibration plates, what I call 3D landmarks before, um, or what I called 3D landmarks before. Um, so really everything that you need out of the box to kind of get up and running, besides some of the more obvious things that we're going to talk about today. And that is a nice segue into the SMC product line, which I'm going to hand the, the presentation over to uh, Nate Cogshell to discuss with you guys further. Nate Cogshell is a applications, electrical applications specialist with SMC. We call him the brain. He, he knows everything there is to know about SMC's electrical products, especially the newer ones that are getting released. And, and he knows a ton about the, uh, the standard pneumatic products as well. So. He's a great resource and we've enjoyed working with him over the years. Just as an FYI, if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, type your questions out in the chat or in the uh, questions box. And at the end, we will go through everything and, and make sure those questions get answered. So with that being said, I will hand over to Nate. And Nate, do you have anything to add to any of the stuff I just talked about? Uh, no, you, uh, like you said, you provided a really good segue into uh, our portion of the presentation. So uh, thank you for your uh, um, uh, leading things off and uh, all of the great detail on Omron Cobots. Um, let me uh, just share my screen here and uh, let me know if you can see me on the webcam and you can also see my screen. Yes, we can see both. All right, uh, I'm gonna switch to slideshow mode. Okay, I'm in slideshow mode now. Uh, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so a little introduction on myself. Uh, my name is Nate Cogashell BA. I've been with SMC now for approximately 18 years. I'm an application specialist here in uh, New England. Uh, I work with uh, Joe Butterfield, who is also on the line here. We, uh, we work together to support uh, customer applications here in New England. Um, involving all of our technology, but uh, obviously uh, one of those areas uh, that we're really focusing on right now is uh, collaborative robots. So working very closely with Purse Bertram on identifying opportunities um, for collaborative robots and then uh, uh, we're
working with customers to identify the, the correct mix of uh, SMC and uh, Purse Bertram solutions to, uh, to, to get you where you need to be with the application. So uh, my portion of the presentation is really going to be uh, heavily product focused on our end effector products. Um, the first three end effector products that I'm going to uh, talk about are uh, products that we've designed specifically for the Omron Techman line. Uh, these are plug and play units that actually attach directly to uh, Omron Techman robots, uh, Techman collaborative robots, that is, and um, uh, you can use these immediately. Um, so that's going to be the first part of my presentation. The second part is going to be some other offender. Uh, uh, and effector products that we think uh, could potentially play well uh, in this environment. Uh, they're not necessarily designed uh, with a, um, a, a cobot interface at this point, uh, but there is uh, potential synergies by using these products as well. So we'll we'll get started on the uh, the products that are designed specifically for Omron Techman at this point. Um, the first one we've got is our uh, JMHC Air Gripper unit, and essentially uh, what this is used for. Uh, is any pick and place applications where you would traditionally use a two finger gripper. Um, these would potentially be parts that um, have uh, a fairly even shape, um, a fairly even design that you could pick up. Um, anything from um, soda cans to, um, to small uh, work pieces such as plastic, um, plastic pucks that might be going into an assembly process and um, a uh, injection molding uh, application. Uh, there's a variety of other uh, potential applications for these, but again, the focus here is traditional uh, two-finger air grippers, uh, where where products like that would uh, would you know normally be used. We can now integrate that into a, a collaborative robot. So, like I said before, these are plug-and-play. They work with the uh, Omron Techman uh, TM5, TM12, and TM14 uh, product series. Uh, they are compatible with the TM component software, uh, so they uh, immediately integrate right into the uh, uh, the platform. Uh, they're very compact, lightweight, and, lightweight, and there's a very high level of gripping force with these. Really, all that's needed to connect this to the the uh, the collaborative robot is one air supply along with an electrical connector. Uh, the electrical connector is built right into the device here, so we basically just plug immediately into the uh, the connector on the Omron Techman robot, um, and uh, uh, essentially you're good to go at that point. The unit itself, uh, the gripper unit itself, has an integrated solenoid valve, uh, speed adjustment mechanism, and solid state auto switches, so that you can do some uh, position detection on the um, on the gripper itself. Uh, reason you might want that is if you have several different types of parts that you're picking up, uh, you could potentially um, uh, determine what part you're picking up through through the position detection sensors um, with, you know, with the size of the part, how far the fingers are, are, are moving uh, in or out. You can actually determine what size part you're picking up. There's an extremely high level of uh, rigidity and uh, position repeatability, uh, or position repeatability with these. We're plus or minus 0.01 millimeters. Uh, we do have a split protection cover, so this is a protection cover that you see on here. This is actually a split design so that you can actually remove this um, from the cobot, uh, remove it from the, uh, the unit itself if you need to service any of the internal components underneath. And it does comply with the ISO standards um, for collaborative robots. Uh, uh, Omron Techman complies with this. Uh, ISO standard, so uh, we do as well for, and that's particularly around the, the whole mounting structure on it. Um, this unit is actually uh, available now um, on the Omron Techman uh, website. So just a little bit more detail, uh, specifically I want to draw a note to the split protection cover that shows how the cover can be removed uh, without having to actually remove any of the, um, the finger attachments or anything here. You can just remove the split cover. Um, from the unit and uh, service any of the parts underneath very easily. So that was our two finger gripper unit. Um, there are certainly applications where uh, a two finger gripper may not be uh, the best option. Um, parts may be uh, irregularly shaped. Um, it might be difficult uh, to grab a hold of them. They might be soft parts. A gripper, an air gripper might not necessarily be the best option for that. Um, so we've developed a vacuum gripper unit. This is our ZXP um, vacuum gripper unit. 
And again, this is going to be ideal for applications where you would traditionally use um, vacuum. Um, this would be, like I said, to pick up soft parts. You might be picking up um, bags of, uh, of material, whether that's uh, potentially a food item or, a, um, or, or some other um, maybe plastic pellets, a bag full of plastic pellets, um, a bag full of clean uh, materials. Uh, you could use the pad to pick it up. Uh, we, obviously, vacuum pads can be used for a variety of other applications. There's some cross between what vacuum pads pick up as well as what uh, air grippers pick up. Um, but certainly, a, a vacuum gripper is going to um, pick up um, uh, parts that potentially would not be uh, um, easy to pick up with a with a two finger gripper. So, just like the uh, gripper unit, the uh, air gripper unit, this one is plug and play with the same. Um, um, variety of Omron Techman Cobots. Uh, TM component uh, compatible, so it immediately is available for use with the Omron Techman um, software. Uh, it is an all-in-one vacuum gripper unit. So essentially what that means is we have a, a built-in um, vacuum ejector in here along with a supply and release valve. Uh, supply valve to actually supply the vacuum to the pad, but then also a release valve to um, dispel the part once uh, the application is complete. Um, it also has a built-in pressure sensor, too, so that you can do some um, um, vacuum pressure detection. And again, uh, you use that in the same way that you would use the auto switches on the air gripper unit, uh, basically to determine what kind of part you are picking up based on the level of vacuum that you're pulling from the, from the vacuum um, uh, end effector. So like I said, it's got the uh, integrated uh, vacuum ejector, air supply valve, uh, air supply and release valves, as well as the present, uh, pressure sensors. It also obviously includes the vacuum pads here as well. Um, so again, can be used for a variety of different applications, um, particularly those where um, air grippers are not uh, a good option, but it can be used for um, it can be used for a variety of other um, um, applications as well. Um, so it uses absorption uh, operation just like uh, all of our other vacuum um, ejectors do. Uh, it is standards based again same uh, same standards and uh, it is visible on the uh, the Omron Techman website so just a little bit more detail on this um, so uh, what we have here is uh, a variety of different options for vacuum cups the picture that you saw before showed a total of vac uh, four vacuum cups you can actually uh, design these with two vacuum cups uh, or one vacuum cup, depending on what the application calls for and the size of parts that you're picking up. Uh, you also have some flexibility in uh, the, the types of pads that you use in terms of the different materials, uh, flat pads, bellow pads, um, silicone pads, NBR pads, urethane pads. We also have these, uh, these newer vacuum pads that are ideal for um, uh, FDA food processing applications as well. Um, this image here is showing the integrated uh, supply and release valves, the vacuum ejector, as well as the pressure sensor. The other thing to note with this product is that if you are currently using a vacuum pump in your application and you don't necessarily want to introduce a vacuum ejector uh, and you want to use the vacuum pump that you already have in your system, you can actually remove this top portion of this product and that bottom section where the pads are actually mounted is also an ISO flange that will mount directly to the Omron Techman uh, Cobot. Uh, it does come uh, with the option to uh, plug a fitting in here where you could pipe in uh, your vacuum supply from your external vacuum source. So you can um, reduce the overall footprint size of this and use a vacuum pump by just removing and using this bottom flange. Uh, the other thing to note, which I'll get into further in the next slide, is this, um, this is ZP2V uh, vacuum saving valve. So what this is is an additional option that you can get with these units, and you'll see it's in actually installed on these vacuum pads here. And essentially what this does is um, in the situation where you have this, where you are um, gripping um, um, a part that may not come in contact with all of the vacuum pads, on the gripper unit, you can actually use this ZP2V vacuum saving valve to restrict vacuum to the pads that aren't actually engaged with the workpiece and redirect, redirect that vacuum flow to the vacuum pads that are uh, in contact with this workpiece. And what this helps us to do is to prevent 
obviously energy savings loss from pull, trying to pull vacuum on vacuum pads that aren't engaged with the part, but also drop prevention. It, it helps us to redirect the flow of vacuum to the other pads and prevent any potential dropping of the workpiece uh, due to um, not complete engagement uh, with all of the pads. All right, moving on. So the, the third and final uh, Omron Techman Ready end effector product that we have is our magnetic ripper unit. And this really is a, a great option for customers that have uh, work pieces that are made from ferrous materials. So rather than a, uh, using a traditional two finger air gripper or a vacuum gripper, uh, a magnetic gripper might be an option uh, if you're picking up ferrous materials that have a variety of different shapes and sizes as well as uh, potential uh, holes in the surface where it would be difficult necessarily to use a two-finger air gripper, but it'd also be very difficult to use a vacuum gripper because the surface uh, is, not, um, is not uniform and symmetrical. So um, basically this uh, uses, the, this uses uh, essentially a, an air-driven actuator inside this unit. Um, basically it's a, a piston with a magnet on the end of it. And it's double acting, and basically it works just like a, trad a traditional air, uh, air cylinder, except we don't have a rod on it. We have a magnet on the end uh, of the, the piston. And as the uh, magnet gets close to this plate here, uh, it increases the magnetic force and allows you to pick up parts. And then as you pull the magnet away, it allows uh, uh, the magnetic force to drop and the workpiece to, uh, to come off the gripper. So this is completely... Uh, a pneumatic solution. This is a uh, as an earth magnet on the end of this piston, so it's not an electric uh, electrical mechanic or electromagnetic uh, type of magnet. Uh, it's it's purely an earth magnet. So the focus here, obviously, is perforated, uneven, or complex work shapes. Um, again, it's plug and play with the same uh, series of Omron Techman cobots that we've previously discussed. Uh, compatible with the software, so it plugs in uh, immediately and you're ready to go. A um, couple other things that this does is it actually um, it actually is designed to prevent deformation of work pieces uh, as well as accidental absorption of, of second work pieces. And the way that we're able to achieve this is through adjustment of uh, the position of the magnet on the end of this. So obviously, as the magnet is further away, the magnetic force will be less. As it's closer, the magnetic uh, force will be higher. Uh, we can play with that to actually uh, uh, design an application to pick up uh, single work pieces and also prevent any possible bending uh, or damage. Uh, so this unit actually has a very high holding force, up to 200 newtons, um, and that's based on a, a plate thickness of six millimeters. Um, these guys, because it is a magnet, when air is shut off, uh, the cylinder will stop or the piston will stop where it is and the magnet will stay in place and will hold the workpiece. So even when air is shut off, we don't uh, have any issues with, uh, with dropped workpieces. Uh, again, simple operation. You plug this in uh, to a single uh, air tube along with uh, the M8 electrical connector and you're, uh, you're ready to go. It does, like all the other products, have the integrated components required to drive it. So in this case, it would be a solenoid valve, uh, a speed adjustment mechanism um, for control of how fast your stroke is going on the magnet, and also solid state auto switches like the, the JMHC air gripper. Uh, again, ISO standard, uh, ISO mounting standards. And uh, just uh, a few more pictures of possible applications for this. Specifically in this uh, particular case, we're picking up a metal part that is curved, but it also has holes through the surface. And uh, this would be very difficult to pick up potentially with a, with a two finger air gripper or, or a suction uh, vacuum type gripper. But in this case, we're using a magnetic gripper to pick up this unit. Um, and again, this is just showing the integrated uh, components, the integrated solenoid valve, uh, as well as the integrated um, speed adjustment. Hey, Nate, Josh here. Hey, Nate. Yeah. Josh here. Yeah. Hey, I hope you don't mind if I, I cut in for just one second here. Um, Absolutely. I of, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of customers in my neck of the woods who use welding equipment and other types of heavy industrial equipment that might throw arcs. How is the magnetic gripper in, in those types of environments? 
Um, so we currently uh, would n not necessarily recommend this for direct exposure uh, to um, to the welding uh, application because the uh, and and potentially the the cobot itself because that could potentially uh, damage the components without any shielding. So we would recommend uh, you know a high level of shielding around the cobot. Uh, in terms of the actual um, you know, noise uh, effect on the gripper itself, that should be, um, that should be fairly minimal because this is a, a like I said, an earth magnet. So um, there's gonna be no impact of, you know, um, electrical arcing on how the magnet operates per se, uh, because okay. it is an earth magnet. But, but the actual welding itself may, may potentially damage the unit as well as the, uh, as the cobot. So we would really want to look at that. We, we'd really want to look at that app. Can, sounds like sounds like somebody's uh, not muted. Can somebody mute themselves? Sounds like Al. Yeah, yeah. We're you're in the. Uh, uh, apparently, he talked to Paul Marchinetti, who uh, who uh, turned him on to me. And, and we spoke, and uh, I don't know where he gets 20 horsepower. I, I see we no. sold him hey. a Omron uh, servo. Oh, all right, hold on. I'm going to try and mute these and, guys. And I also, and Sorry. I also quoted him uh, some Unitronic servo motors and drives as well, just so you know. Because Sorry, Nate, go ahead. All right, sorry everybody for the interruption. Um, for Unitronic servos, because that, that's what I think. Oh. Yeah, so Josh, when you muted, you muted everybody. Okay. All right, okay, maybe we're all set now. All right, uh, so again, sorry for the interruption. So really, um, you know, not to say that we wouldn't uh, recommend this for the application. We would just want to do some more uh, detailed analysis of the application to make sure the product, uh, both products are properly shielded um, before, you know, pushing forth with a solution for that kind of environment. Okay, uh, great. All right. So, yeah, no problem. So, moving on. Um, the next unit that we have is a product that's currently in development. It hasn't actually been released, but it should be released fairly shortly. Um, in some applications, customers don't have uh, availability of compressed air, and in all the other solutions we looked at, it, it, it involved uh, each of the products involved a compressed air line. Uh, but there are some applications where that's not possible or uh, necessarily desirable. So um, in those environments, uh, an electric gripper solution may be an option where you don't need compressed air at all. Uh, again, it would be a, you know, a standard gripper type application, a two-finger gripper application where you're picking up parts where you don't necessarily want to have compressed air also piped in. Um, this LEHF uh, electric gripper unit will allow you to do that. Uh, basically, this is going to have a, uh, a mount on top here for an Omron Techman co collaborative robot. And then you've got our standard LEHF uh, electric gripper attached, um, and they'll be these are the two fingers. They're low-profile fingers. Um, these do not come with any finger attachments per se, like the JMHC air gripper unit that we looked at. Uh, but these would be something that uh, that you, as a customer, could design based on the requirements of your application. Uh, actual finger attachments to use with these. But this would be uh, a, a complete electric solution without uh, compressed air. Um, with these, you can grip to either a position or you can actually grip to a specific force, depending on the shape or size of the workpiece and the amount of force that you want to apply to the workpiece. You know, for instance, an, uh, an application where you have breakable parts, if you're picking up glass bottles or things like that, you, you don't want to actually crush and, and destroy the workpiece. You can actually set these up to drive to a specific force so that you can prevent damage to the workpiece. Um, these allow for much longer strokes. Um, than the JMHZ air gripper unit that we looked at. And it's got really good gripping force uh, between 48 to 120 newtons worth of force, depending on the size and shape of the workpiece. Um, really good position repeatability, plus or minus 0 0.005 millimeters. And again, this is going to be um, standards-based for uh, mounting. 
All right. So that was really the um, the collaborative robot uh, products that are designed specifically to work with collaborative robots. Now we're going to get into some other products that are still potential solutions for uh, for collaborative robots, but we don't necessarily have interfaces designed for them yet. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is our CNC Bernoulli uh, non-contact gripper. Um, so this is a uh, is essentially a vacuum a non-contact vacuum gripper. Um, and, and what we're focusing on here is minimal contact with workpieces. So there are multiple applications where a direct contact with a workpiece may damage the workpiece. Um, think about um, printed circuit boards uh, or, or sensitive films. Uh, using a vacuum pad on there to pull a vacuum might actually uh, create damage to the part um, because they're, they're both very sensitive uh, workpieces. So uh, the ZNC Bernoulli gripper might be an option for those kinds of applications. Um, other applications where we've seen a really good um, success with these are thin cloth, uh, bubble wrap, and uh, other substrate type materials. So we did have a previous series of Bernoulli grippers. Uh, this is a, a replacement or a new version of those, um, and it has actually provided a 72% reduction over uh, the energy that was consumed by that previous series. Uh, so there's significant uh, air consumption savings with this um, product. It has a pretty good lifting force. Um, it is 28.3 Newtons, which is a dramatic improvement over our previous product series. I think it's 4.4 times what our previous product series was able to provide. Oh, actually, I take that back. They've updated the information. It's 5.7 times a conventional product. So um, a really good um, um, improvement over the uh, existing product series. Uh, so these are available with three different types of body uh, materials. We have resin. Uh, aluminum or stainless steel, again, depending on uh, the particular application that you have, um, would determine what, what body type that you would select for that. We do have some additional available options with this. Uh, we have a stopper, um, and that basically prevents uh, slippage of work pieces. And then we also have a vibration suppression cover. Sometimes with the, um, the Bernoulli grippers, there uh, is a tendency to create some vibration noise. So this vibration suppression cover will help to reduce the potential for that. Um, so just uh, another slide that shows uh, potential applications for this. Again, uh, printed circuit boards where you can't have any contact uh, uh, with, with the workpiece itself. Uh, picking it up using bubble wrap, which is a very uneven uh, surface and an asymmetrical surface, thin cloth where, you know, traditional vacuum pads may struggle because it's a very porous material. Uh, these work very well with that. And then obviously thin films as well where we can't make any marks or impressions on the film. So this is just another slide. This is just another picture showing that sub suppression, uh, the vibration suppression cover, uh, the stopper attachment as well. We provide both of these in a mixture of different material to put types, depending on what uh, the application calls for. You can also get this with an integrated uh, pressure sensor as well if you want to uh, do some vacuum sensing to, again, determine the level of vacuum you're pulling from this. Uh, it can help you to, to determine what kind of part you're picking up uh, without actually having to, to go out and look at, at what part is being picked up. So, Nate, very quick question for you. Yeah. So in the non-contact ripper department, I just, this may be an obvious question, but does the workpiece physically actually make contact with the gripper or is there a, a thin cushion of air there between that printed circuit board and the gripper, for example? Yeah, so there, there is actually two different ways to use this. You can use it as a fully non-contact gripper, where in this case, we're not making any contact with the workpiece. Um, when you are using these stoppers, though, uh, you are going to create some contact with the workpiece um, on the stoppers themselves, but not on the gripper head. So there is always going to be a thin layer of air between uh, the gripper unit itself and the um, workpiece that you're picking up. Um, and in most cases, there'd be no contact. But in the case of these stoppers, there would be contact on the, on the stoppers themselves. Um, and there would be with the vibration suppression cover, also potential contact with the workpiece on these, um, you know, these pieces of the of a vibration uh, suppression cover as well. So these may not be a 
viable option for applications where you can't have any uh, level of contact with uh, with the workpiece at all. So again, this would be something that we would have to work uh, with each customer specifically to determine what the uh, the actual requirements are of the application uh, and to determine you know if these uh, products would be necessary or if there needs to be uh, complete no contact with the workpiece at all. Uh, the other thing to note is that these are often used in pairs because the, um, there's um, circular motion of the air underneath this vacuum pad. That's why these stoppers come in handy to prevent slippage of the workpiece. Um, but if you use these in pairs, um, that would potentially uh, eliminate the, the concerns that would come with uh, potential spinning of the, of the workpiece due to the circular air motion underneath this gripper. So there are other ways around it. Uh, without having to use an uh, attachment stopper to uh, to prevent that workpiece slippage. All right. Um, so moving on, uh, the next product that uh, the next group of products we're going to talk about are um, two finger gripper products. Um, a variety of different options here. The first one we're going to talk about is a finger changer gripper. So basically, what this is uh, is a a base gripper unit with the option to change out finger assemblies based on different work pieces that need to be picked up. And the, this can be done um, automatically without human intervention. So essentially what this is, is um, a two finger gripper. It's a double acting two finger gripper. These slide back and forth on a rack, uh, rack and pinion mechanism. But we also have an additional airport added to this. And what that additional airport uh, provides is the option to release this finger set and then go pick up a second uh, finger set. So um, this is great for applications where you need to change and retool very quickly to pick up uh, different size or shape work pieces. Um, so again, it's gonna be same kinds of applications that we've looked at before for two finger grippers, but really the focus here is, is a multitude of different work pieces and uh, quick tool changing. So the objective there is to really speed up cycle times on, uh, on, on cobots and collaborative robots. Uh, and to uh, to reduce obviously the the, hum the time that's required for human intervention. So everything um, I'm just going to slide through these um, because I want to get to the next slide. Um, kind of just already discussed these. They're, again, the real focus here is uh, is energy or is uh, time savings and cycle um, cycle rate um, increases. We've also, with this product, reduced uh, the footprint size on this as well uh, compared to the standard uh, MHF2 product series. And we've reduced, the, we've reduced the weight on it as well. So this is, this is essentially how it is uh, designed to work. Uh, you'd have the robot here or the, the, the cobot here uh, picking up um, this particular shape, which in this case is a cube. Um, and then right next or near or next to it, you would have uh, different finger sets to pick up these other size work shapes or pieces. And so when you want to retool and shift from this lane to this lane, all the cobot uh, or robot has to do is swing over here, drop this finger set into this slot here, and then slide over, pick up this finger set and come back in and, and start working with this all um, through programming uh, without uh, requiring any human intervention. Uh, the airport, like I said, allows you to dispel one finger set um, and then the other one connects to it mechanically uh, when it drops down to connect to it. All right, uh, another variation, uh, same product series or MHF2 two finger gripper, but a different variation is a, um, a fixed finger uh, gripper. So basically two finger gripper, one finger is fixed on an adjustable mechanism where you can actually um, change the, the position of this, um, this fixed finger. Um, but then the other finger is the working finger. So you can basically set this up as a reference point. You can come in, line the gripper up against a part, and then close down on it uh, without having to, um, to, to try to fight with the um, mechanism of a two-finger gripper. So again, uh, it's great for pick and place applications where traditional two finger grippers would be used, but the focus here is, uh, is creating that reference point. Uh, like I said, it's uh, adjustable, so you can uh, manipulate that and uh, modify it as required by the application. 
Uh, it is uh, a compact and lightweight product series. Again, like the, uh, the previous one that we looked at, this particular MHF2 has also been reduced in both footprint size as well as weight over the, the previous product series. Uh, we have multiple different options for mounting. Uh, we have several different stroke lengths available and uh, we have multiple bore sizes as well. So there's a lot of flexibility in the product line to determine, you know, to, to specifically determine which uh, size um, and stroke length would work best for, uh, for your particular application. Uh, it does include a switch rail uh, or a switch groove where you can mount auto switches for position detection as well. And those can be used both on the fixed finger as well as the moving finger. And so, like I said, maximum width and uh, weight reduction. It's been uh, uh, a lot. We've taken a lot of the material out of it. Um, obviously, when we talk about things like footprint size, weight reduction, uh, length reduction, we're really focusing on the, the robot uh, market space because the less weight that's on the end of the arm of the robot, the better uh, the, better, uh, the application is for the, the cobot uh, or the, uh, the industrial robot. So just a, another slide showing a lot of the, the product variation here. Uh, the bottom line here is that there's a lot of flexibility to this product series, um, which would allow us to, like I said, design uh, a solution that, that is ideal for your application. So along the same kind of uh, lines as that fixed finger gripper is that we have a uh, asynchronous gripper as well on our MHF2 uh, product series. And what this does is actually allows us to control each one of these fingers independently. So our standard MHF2 product series is um, the fingers are connected on a rack and pinion. So they operate in unison as they uh, both fingers open and close at the same time. They're controlled by the same um, uh, supply and exhaust ports. So they operate as a single um, actuator um, and the fingers are completely tied together. In the case of an asynchronous gripper, we've actually re, um, put each finger on its own air supply, so we actually are able to drive each finger independently. And what this allows us to do, we can still we can also we can still use this as a reference point, like we did in the previous application, where we come in, line the one finger up against the the side of a part, and then close it, come in and close in with the other finger. But you can also use this finger in applications where you might actually be come into the workpiece off center from the workpiece. Um, you don't want to move the workpiece on the conveyor at all. You want it to stay stationary. You can use this gripper to grip on to, to have one finger grip to, to one side of the part um, and then use the other finger to grip to the other side of the part without actually moving physically moving the workpiece. So again, it's going to be a lot of the same applications, pick and place applications. But again, the focus here is uh, the reference point as well as the, uh, um, the coming into a workpiece off center. Um, so the fingers, uh, the fingers stop once the, the gripper has, has come in contact with the part. Um, and then that way we are not actually physically moving the part around on the conveyor. Uh, it's got a, a couple of different piping connection options. Um, currently, we don't have a lot of variation on this product series, but um, there is more variation coming. We only offer it in one bore size currently, but it's got really good gripping force up to, uh, to 90 newtons. Uh, we only do have one stroke available currently as well. So just a, a couple more pictures here, kind of showing an application example. Um, in this particular case, we've got this workpiece that is uh, positioned against a couple of electrodes. Um, any movement of this workpiece this way or that way would cause it to not be lined up with these electrodes. So this would be an ideal application for a gripper like this where the fingers aren't tied together. So we can come in off center, close to one side of this workpiece, then close down on the other side of it without um, fighting to move this um, workpiece to the center position of the gripper. All right, um, so three finger gripper um, option here. So there are some applications where three fingers are, three finger grippers are more desirable than a two finger air gripper. Things like picking up um, golf balls or um, rounded shapes where uh, a two finger gripper may not provide a firm hold on the part. Uh, that third finger will help you get better support and a better grip, grip on the, the, the part itself. 
you may want to use a three-finger gripper for applications like this. In the case of this MHS3 double gripper reverse unit, this is actually a, a quick tool change option for a three-finger gripper where we actually have two um, three-finger grippers uh, side by side, but they're on opposite sides of this end effector. Um, you can have different finger attachments attached to each one of these grippers, and then you can quickly switch back and forth uh, t between two different size shape work pieces with this gripper unit uh, without actually having to change the finger uh, gripper assembly like you had to in the MHF2 version that we looked at previously. This one has both gripper heads built right into the unit, so you can quickly um, turn, switch this around um, through rotation motion and flip uh, which uh, gripper head you're using. So it's great for uh, workpiece transfer uh, with gant grant gantry loaders. Um, it's great for loading and unloading uh, work pieces, but um, like I said, it can handle multiple different work shapes and sizes from a single uh, robot without having to uh, to do uh, complex tool changing. Another product that we have uh, in our lineup is a combined uh, rotary gripper unit. This is a two-finger gripper attached to a rotary actuator. This one uh, MRHQ is a complete pneumatic solution so both the rotary as well as the gripper are pneumatic actuators. Uh, we do have a, a limitation on the rotation angle uh, because it is a pneumatic uh, rotary, but it would be great for applications where you need to um, um, turn, uh, grip and turn. Um, think about capping applications or um, shifting uh, the position of, uh, of a part to have it pad printed where you want to pick it up, turn it, uh, turn it to one angle to print, uh, you know, a certain um, bit of lettering and then turn it to another angle to, to print another, uh, you know, an, another group of lettering or another label. So uh, there's many other applications where this could potentially be used as well, but um, it's really great for applications requiring that combined motion of grip and turn. So it is, uh, it is a, a modular construction, so if parts become damaged or need to be replaced, uh, it's easy to replace those components without having to remove the unit and replace the whole unit uh, or ship the, the unit back to us for repairs. Uh, you can adjust the rotation angle on these. Um, the adjustment bolts for that is, uh, is standard, and we also uh, offer switches or switch uh, grooves for auto switches so that you can do, again, position detection, uh, again, to determine what size and shape of part you're picking up based on, um, on what those uh, position sensors are reading. Uh, we have centralized piping on these, so the gripper and the uh, rotary portion are supplied by the same, on the same side, um, and that makes it easier to, uh, to plumb these uh, in, a, in a robot or cobot application. And again, like a lot of our other grippers, uh, this has excellent uh, finger opening and closing repeatability, plus or minus 0.01 millimeters. Another option that we have on this same product series is um, the ability to integrate the rotary portion of this with uh, electric motor. And what this allows us to do is to still use that pneumatic gripper head, but now we can use an electric motor to do continuous rotation on this. So this would be really a, a great product for uh, cap tightening. Um, also possibly a test tube barcode reading where you need to spin a test tube more than 360 degrees to read a barcode on it. Um, and also uh, this particular one is showing uh, uh, an option for uh, inspection. So that would be um, the barcode reading as well as a variety of other applications as well. So. Um, same kind of concept as the one we looked at before, but now we have the option to integrate an electric motor with this so that you can do continuous rotation. And then the last product I want to look at is, again, same kind of uh, vein as the other two products we looked at, but this one is a complete electric solution. So we're basically integrating a two-finger electric gripper with a electric uh, rotary actuator to provide um, um, continuous rotation and gripping but in a complete uh, electric package without any kind of compressed air. So like that uh, LEHZ um, 
electric gripper uh, co-bought unit that we looked at before, this would be ideal for applications that require that uh, rotation and, and grip motion, but um, where there is no availability of compressed air or where compressed air is not desirable. Um, we are currently only offering this in one uh, particular body size, but we have uh, more body sizes uh, coming in the very near future for this. Uh, we also are going to include an option for a three-finger electric gripper on this as well. Uh, again, if you're picking up shapes that would are work pieces that would not necessarily work well with a two-finger gripper, but a three-finger gripper would 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 be ideal. We will have a three-finger option, three-finger gripper option on this. We do also offer a mounting um, bracket for this that you can actually uh, combine this with an LEYG uh, guide rod style electric actuator to get an up and down motion on this as well. So you can combine the motion of up and, uh, up and down as well as rotation and grip all um, within the same package. So um, um, a great option, again, for applications requiring um, that, that rotation and grip, like capping applications, uh, barcode reading, and in inspection, testing, so on and so forth. And that is the end of my, uh, my portion of the presentation. Great, great, awesome, awesome stuff, Nate. Thank you so much. Do you want to uh, throw it back over to me just so I can wrap up real quick? I am sending it to you right now. Great. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Okay. All righty. So again, Josh, sales and marketing manager here at First Bertram, guys. I just want to say thank you to everyone who was able to come to this. This is the first of a three-part series. Obviously, we just went through the first one that has to do with grippers, new products. And again, guys, we are going to send this deck to you like it said in the email that you got as part of the invite, just so you can go through and see the, the more intimate details, stroke lengths, forces, et cetera. I realize we are up against time here, but I am going to uh, keep the, the webinar open for a few extra minutes just so we can answer some of the questions that came up. The, uh, the next one is going to be in a basically a week and exactly a week from today. And the focus on that is, or sorry, the, um, got those backwards the 29th is going to be a focus on safety products so that is two weeks from today and the uh, second one is going to be a focus on things other than the gripper those are things that have to do with valve banks frls vacuum generators there's been some really cool new products that smc has released that kind of go behind the gripper that uh i think most of you would would appreciate so um Last but not least, guys, I do want to mention that there is a, uh, a tent show offering going on right now with SMC. So if any of this stuff is of interest to you or anyone else in your company, SMC will actually come on site. And whether it's a lunch and learn or just an outdoor excursion for your employees, we will come in with what we call mini panels, which are small examples of the product they offer. And we will set up a nice little trade show for you at your facility. So the link to do that is shown there. Again, we will send this PowerPoint to you so you can actually click on the link. And uh, other than that, guys, we will um, ask that you guys go ahead and, and um, throw any questions you have our way. You know, this is all about making sure you guys are comfortable with the product, you understand how it operates, you understand how it will work in your application. So um, for those of you who are still with us, I am going to know, now go to the, uh, the chat feature here and open up to some questions. Uh, Nate, the first question I have here is, what is the uh, temperature operating range for the vacuum gripper? Um, so uh, that's gonna be our the standard operating range for most of our vacuum products. Um, I don't have, I can check right now to see if we've got um, the details on that. If you um, want to, move on to the next question I can check on that quickly yep. I can come back to that um, yeah so the uh, next question I'm looking at here it says does SMC have an option for a routing or trimming unit for a cobot he's trying to trim a piece of plastic with a simple two flute quarter inch flat end mill um, my inclination there Nate is no they do not as of yet have a trimming product for an end effector but can you confirm that is correct. We do not. Um, certainly, we can 
use um, any of our products in tandem with that, uh, but we don't currently manufacture anything like that. Okay. And uh, the last question I'm looking, or sorry, the second to last question I'm looking at here is um, what is the uh, weight limit for the uh, XPF7 model? Um, all right, hang on. I will get both the answers to uh, the questions on the ZXP okay. unit I here. Can, I, can, I, can the last, I can do the last one, Nate, while I can do that stuff up. Yep, sure. So the last question I had here, guys, was what is the relationship between Purse Bertram and SMC, which is a great question. And to answer that, I'm going to skirt back here to a few slides that I uh, prepared. Hopefully everyone can still see my screen. So here at Purse Bertram, guys, we are everything automation. We're a 70 plus year distributor based in the Bloomfield, Connecticut area. We like to consider ourselves, like I said, as a one-stop shop for automation. So pneumatics, hydraulics, electric control panel, um, about 33,000 square feet, 43 employees, just some real basic information about us here. We do have a significant amount of SMC in stock as one of our key lines. You can see some nice pictures there in the background of our, of our facilities. Um, so the big question is, you know, what's the point? Why do distributors even exist? Why should I deal with a distributor? Why can't I just deal with SMC directly? You know, why is a distributor, a valuable partner to uh, to deal with. And there's several reasons, several big reasons actually. Uh, one of the key reasons is that we can offer competitive pricing to end customers like you because we buy in huge bulk quantities, right? So we deal with several large OEMs and large end users all over New England who are buying a significant amount of SMC. And if you know anything about SMC, you'll know that the more you can group together, the better your pricing will be. It's all discount based. So by buying a large amount of it, we can offer savings to everyone because we get top tier discounting. Also, like I mentioned, we have a significant amount of stock in Bloomfield, Connecticut. So if you're looking for a part and you need it there overnight, UPS Ground will get it there in one day anywhere in New England. So we do take lead times very seriously and we do our best to accommodate people who are using things on a regular basis or, thing, or people who need things in a, in a hurry. And we actually will work with our inventory manager on site to set up a specific stocking program for you if you are using things on a regular basis. Uh, obviously, we take customer service very seriously. It's, it's no cliche when I say here at Purse Bertram, we are customer centered. Everything we do is for the value and, and service of our customers. We understand that we wouldn't be in business if it wasn't for you guys. So we do everything we can in terms of service, support, technology offering to make sure that as the customer, you feel that you're comfortable with the product and that it's going to serve the needs that you have. That being said, we do have free on-site application support. We have roughly nine salespeople covering the New England region, in addition to the SMC reps who can actually come in and help as well. So whether that's looking at old parts and you need a crossover, or maybe you have a brand new application, you're not sure what to use, we have engineers on staff who can come in and basically make sure that you get what you need. Last but not least, guys, I will mention that the, probably the biggest value we bring to the SMC product is the fact that we can now take those SMC parts and we can put them together. We are a contract manufacturer value add panel shop in Bloomfield, Connecticut. So, Okay, yeah, so I will show you guys some examples of that on the next slide. And uh, last I'll mention, uh, again, safety is on everyone's mind nowadays. We are a safety organization in the sense that we sell safety products. And so if you run into a situation where you're not sure exactly what's going on from a safety standpoint, we can come in and either do a formal or informal audit and provide recommendations as far as safety goes for your manufacturing operations. Um, so getting back to the value add side of things, it's assembly, it's testing, it's labeling, it's packaging, stocking. The gist of it is we can take SMC product and we can combine it with other products that we represent, other brands that we represent to create a total turnkey off the dock, ready to go solution. So for example, maybe your company is using a pneumatic panel as part of their machine or maybe you need a electrical control panel in your robotic setup 
or maybe you need to set up a vision inspection cell before the product actually gets to a robot, whatever it may be. We can come in, we can look at the application with you, we can have our on-staff engineers pick out products and use CAD to design your system for you. And then we can build the entire thing for you, recommend the products that will go into it, and make sure that you guys get what you need from a total solution standpoint. We are UL certified, ISO certified. We take quality very seriously. We have super technicians on staff. They're very experienced in all things manufacturing. And of course, you know, what visits are welcome. If anyone wants to come and see our operation down in Bloomfield, we welcome that as well. And let's see here, do I have a few examples? So here's just a few examples of the things we've done with SMC products. You can see in the upper left, that's a very simple air prep panel that a customer uses as part of their equipment. We have a fluidic manifold on the right-hand side there that's used for a cooling system on a much larger machine. And of course, everyone recognizes the uh, SMC valve bank down there, the uh, D-sub valve bank with a little FRL on the side or a little uh, filter regulator. So again, guys, just, be, being able to bring the value to the SMC product by offering the components that you might need, whether it's a machine component, an electrical control component like a PLC or a relay, we can help design it, we can help build it, we can help deliver it to your end customer wherever they may be. So that's just a quick run through of the value that we bring as a distributor. Here's just an, uh, a picture, I mentioned this before about the tent shows. On the right hand side, you can see that uh, we will come on site with SMC. So Nate, uh, getting back to you, did you happen to get uh, the temperature in the um, the weight? I did. So I I do have some more details. So the the recommended operating temperature range for uh, for the ZXP unit is five to fifty degrees Celsius. Um, so we recommend using it within that temperature range. Uh, with respect to the maximum weight, um, that is really hard to quantify uh, because there's a lot of variables uh, involved. Um, specifically the, the level of air pressure coming into the unit, but also the number of pads uh, that you're using on the ZXP unit, as well as the, the shape, size of the workpiece. Uh, it's really hard to assign a number to that. So, you know, ideally what we'd like to do is to, to sit down uh, on a specific uh, application and review it, uh, review the requirements of it, um, and understand, uh, you know, um, the specific nuances of your application before, you know, assigning a value to, to weight. I, I can tell you that it does have a maximum uh, vacuum pressure of negative um, 84 kilopascals and a maximum suction flow rate of 17 uh, liters per minute. So um, that is, you know, that may help. Uh, in some initial work that you're looking to do and determining what what kind of weight these can these can handle, but uh, again, it's going to really be application uh, dependent uh, to to be able to figure out exactly how much um, uh, vacuum or how much weight it's going to be able to to hold. So, and the other thing I wanted to point out, the other thing I wanted to point out with respect to what Josh was saying about um, you know the uh, integration of uh, Purse Bertram with SMC. Um, we we value our partnership with Purse Bertram very highly, and we find that um, it's you know a, a effective approach for working on opportunities. We find real synergy in terms of working with them hand in hand on applications, um, and we find that the the the, um, the, the best opportunities uh, and the best uh, problems are solved by uh, the two of our organizations working very closely together. Um, and supporting uh, supporting you, the customer, uh, in in your endeavors and in the uh, the applications you're designing. So um, certainly, please uh, reach out to all of us um, for help on any applications that you're working on. Uh, there there is obviously a line of products that we support and uh, and promote, but uh, Purse Bertram has access to a full line of other complementary products that we don't have within our repertoire. Um, and so, you know, there's, there, there, like I said, there's some definite synergy between our two organizations in developing complete and total solutions uh, for your applications. Yeah, and, and let me just echo that, Nate. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, the SMC PV partnership really serves as a great example of how two organizations, a manufacturer and a local distributor CM, can come together and offer 
customers a, a, a great overall experience, a total end-to-end -end solution. So we have enjoyed working with SMC for 10 plus years now, and, and we only see that partnership continuing to grow and expand as we uh, come out of the, the COVID times here. So that being said, guys, I know we went a little bit over for questions. I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. I, I certainly appreciate those of you who have stayed on the call and those who have attended here today. Again, my name is Josh Baptist, Sales and Marketing Manager for First Bertram. This has been Nate Cogshell, Application Specialist with SMC. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We will send you all this information so you can review it. And please do sign up for the uh, second and the third webinars here. I think those are going to show some great new – it's all about new products, right? Those are going to show some great new products that uh, really complement robots well if you guys have a robot application. All righty. All set. Thanks, Josh. Anyone else? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care.